Kevin, I don't want to be a pushover. I don't want people to see me as a doormat. So I am not going to do what is right because I am very stubborn and I am looking for God to curse me more. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, 11 through 12. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So what is all of this saying here? Okay. So blessed are ye when men shall revile you. So what does revile mean? Let's look it up. Let me highlight it. Revile. Criticize in an abusive or angrily insulting manner. So someone being really rude, really mean to you, talking trash about you, mocking you pretty much, stuff like that. Let's continue. And persecute you. So what does persecute mean? Let me highlight this too. Okay. Persecute you. So subject to hostility <clears throat> and ill treatment, especially because of their race or political or religious beliefs. So someone treating you meanly. So here in Revile, they are speaking to you in a very mean way and persecute they are treating you in a very mean way okay so blessed are ye when men shall <laughs> pretty much talk trash about you and treat you meanly and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So this is saying that you are blessed when the people are talking to you crazy and treating you meanly. You are blessed. Verse 12. Rejoice. And be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you, my Lord. So what is this saying? The more that you are being persecuted, the more that you are being reviled, the more you know that you are closer to God. Because... If you was not close to God, if you was not doing his will, people are not really going to pay you any attention. Of course, we all are going to have problems, whether we are in sin or serving God. But the more persecution that comes upon you, the more that you are reviled, especially when you are serving God, that is a good thing. I know that people see this as a bad thing. I know for myself, when I go through bad things, I don't like it. I really don't like it. <laughs> My Lord. But I know that I am on the right track when I see things 
get worse and worse. I am not saying that I want things to get worse, but when things begin to happen to me, that makes absolutely no sense. I know that, hey, this is telling me, obviously, what I am doing for God is working so much that demons are trying to use anything to take me off track, to get me discouraged. I pray that this makes sense. Okay, so this woman gave me an email and she was saying that she really don't really want to do things for people or certain people because she doesn't really want to be a doormat or something like that. If there is a person in need and you have something to give to that person, if you don't give to that person that is in need, in true need, you better watch out. You better watch out. I believe I told you all, nothing is ever a coincidence. There is a reason why that person is asking you. If there is a true need and you have the resources to help that person, and if you don't help that person, you better watch out. A curse is coming your way. Whether I like that person or not, it really doesn't matter. If there is a real, true need, I have to help that person. For instance, in the Bible, there is a story with the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus was in need. He only wanted some food and probably some more help. The rich man had much, but did not share with Lazarus. So when Lazarus died, and when the rich man died, the rich man, the rich man went to hell while Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom, which is not hell, but let me not get into that because I may confuse some people. So the rich man went into hell because of greed. Some people may believe that only rich people can be greedy. No. If, even if you have a tiny bit, if you have enough to share with a person, but you choose to not share with people, you are greedy. You are greedy. I was talking to this one person and unbelievable. This person gets help for free, take things for free. So now this person has the opportunity to help people through their job. What this person said If I am to help a person through this job, I am going to ask them to give me something back. 
<laughs> but you, but they don't ask you to give anything back. But, and you are always being helped. But when you have the opportunity to help people, you want a cut back or you want something in return. I am telling you, being that way, being that way is going to get you cursed. If you have that frame of mind, what you can give me, hey, when I ask you, I don't want you to charge me. I want things for free. But if you want things from me, I am going to charge you. That is evil. That is one sure way to get so many things taken away from you. You are not even humble. That is so wrong on many levels. People wonder why so many things, so many bad things happen to them. Here we go. Your frame of mind, your mentality, it is wicked. So let me stop here. Be smart. Be wise. We all are being tested. This world, I wish I could share or somehow transfer my thoughts into you so you can see what I see and understand what I understand. We are in a test. But you continue to fail in this test because you only think about yourself. You are being helped so much in life. So much by God. But when it is your turn to help, you want something back in return. That is so wicked, man. I know that I am going to reap whatever I sow. God can always outgive. How can I say this? What I give to people, I know that God can give me much more, which he always do. Listen, whatever I give out to people, God always, always give me more back than what I give out. The reason why I give freely, I am not saying that I am going to give everything that I have, which I probably should. Who knows? But I freely give not only money, but my time and other things. I freely give because I know that I am going to get more back from God then I give out. I give because this is what God wants us to do. I trust in God. But when it comes down to many people, even though you say that you know God, even though you say that you are Christian, you are holding back from giving because you believe, well, one day something bad may happen and I don't want to be broke. Don't you know that God can make you sick? Give you cancer or some type of illness where it is going to take almost all of your money. Surgeries and stuff like that, which is going to cost you much. But you are concerned about... I pray that my thoughts can be transferred into you. What God has shown me to be transferred into you. 
God can take everything from you. Something was happening to me. Maybe I forget for almost a year. And I started to notice I am seeing a trend here. What is God trying to say to me? What is he saying to me right now? What is he trying to teach me? I caught on. Okay, he wants me to trust less in money and trust more in him. He wants me to trust less in money and more on him. Don't you know for many of you all, for many of you all, your money is your God. So when something happens, you run to your money, not God. So what if God takes away your money? What are you going to do then? For many people, they kill themselves. And as I have stated in some videos, if you kill yourself, you are going to hell. You are going straight to hell, straight there. No turning, no nothing like that, no. Straight to hell. So let me stop here. God bless you.